Did you know that nearly one in three Americans over the age of 65 is living with diabetes? Even worse, in the last 20 years, the number of adults diagnosed with diabetes has more than doubled. If you or someone you know is living with diabetes, you need to stay tuned to learn how you can prevent, manage, and possibly reverse this disease. Hello and welcome to Catholic Health Stronger Together with Dr. Dave. Today, we're going to examine diabetes, the different types and treatment options. To guide our discussion, we've invited Lucille Hughes, Assistant Vice President of Diabetes Education and Program Design for Catholic Health and a true expert. So yeah. let's get right into it. Okay. What is diabetes? Great question. So diabetes is a chronic disease that really affects how the body turns food into energy. The analogy I like to use with our patients, especially in our classes, we talk about a car, because everyone knows about car and gasoline and fuel. Today when coming to work, I put some gas into my gas tank. It made my car move because gasoline is the fuel for my engine. In diabetes, or I should say in our body, glucose is the same thing. It's our fuel for our body. So we take in food, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, and our body processes basically the carbohydrates into what we call glucose, a lot of people call it blood sugar. And that blood sugar is then moved out into the blood. That's our energy, that's our fuel source for our body, but we have to get it into the gasoline tank, which is in our body, our muscle cells. So our pancreas releases insulin, which is a natural hormone that comes into the blood, takes the glucose, brings it to the cells, unlocks the door, and pushes that glucose inside. That's getting it inside that engine so we can be doing what we're doing right now, Dr. Dave. We can talk, we can move. That's our fuel for our body. And diabetes is a little bit of a challenge. For some individuals, that blood sugar goes out to the blood, but the pancreas can't release insulin. That natural hormone does not work. It's not there. So therefore, glucose is gonna to continue to rise in the blood. For others, they are making that insulin, but when the insulin takes the blood and goes to the muscle cells, it can't unlock the door. For those cases, it's usually fat that's blocking those muscle cells for the insulin to do its job, so it can't work. It's resisted. Just taking it a step further, we always hear type 1 diabetic and type 2 diabetic. Just for the viewers to understand, just briefly, can you just give us a little distinction between the two? Certainly. So in type one diabetes, we used to call that juvenile onset diabetes, right? But we don't call it that anymore. We call it type one diabetes because it can really be diagnosed at any stage of life. Usually though, it's under the age of 20. And that disease, type one diabetes, is an autoimmune disease, which means something got into the body. I know that sounds vague, but we don't know what it is yet, because if we did, we'd have a cure, mm -hmm. right? But something gets in, targets those beta cells. Those are the cells in the pancreas that make insulin and looks at those beta cells and says, you're a foreign object, we don't like you, and destroys them. Therefore, the pancreas can't release that insulin. For those individuals, they take insulin. They can take insulin by injection, by a pen, by an insulin pump, we can inhale insulin. So there's many opportunities or devices to get insulin into the body, but they are insulin dependent. In type two diabetes, that type of diabetes usually occurs over the age of 40. However, we've seen a pandemic in children, Dr. Dave. We see a lot of young children and adolescents with type 2. That's the same type 2 they were supposed to get later in life. And in that particular disease, type 2 diabetes, that is hereditary. So usually when you look at the family tree, individuals will say, oh yeah, my mom or my aunt or my grandfather had diabetes because we see it in families. That disease is hereditary. And that's the disease of insulin resistance because many of those individuals do have some weight to lose. Maybe they're not as physically active. And we have, again, many medications and options, 
um, meal planning exercise to help those individuals as well. You mentioned hereditary, so there is a genetic yeah. predisposition. There is. Is that enough though, or do you need to have environmental factors behaving with the genetic predisposition? Well, you know, that's a really great point because obviously, if I, let's say I have, I know I have type 2 diabetes in my family, I know I do. So do I know I'm carrying that gene? I'm not sure, but I'm going to live my life very proactively. I'm going to make sure that I keep my weight down, that I'm mindful with my meal planning, that I'm physically active, because I don't want to know if I have that right. gene, right? I don't want to find, find that out, out right? right. So we, we help individuals understand that. But if it is in your family tree and you do develop type 2 diabetes, the most important message is Catholic Health has made diabetes education and diabetes management a priority in our mission to help everyone living on Long Island, living with diabetes. So we're here to help. We have great programs. I read a recent statistic, very interesting, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, about one in five Americans mm -hmm. are, are living with diabetes, but they don't even know it. Yes, that, that, is, that is correct. And we also want to look at even a more startling um, statistic is the, the statistics around pre-diabetes. I get, I get really excited, but sometimes a little angry talking about this because we know if we intervene early enough in that pre-diabetes stage, many, many, many times we can prevent type 2 diabetes. Mm. That's where we want to get a lot mm. of those individuals. We want to raise awareness to pre-diabetes, but also with diabetes too, type 2. Sometimes it's not as, um, I was gonna say, it's not it's insidious, so we don't really know we're having it. A person might say, oh, my, my eyes are a little bit blurry, right? Or I feel really tired all the time, not realizing that those are symptoms of type 2 diabetes, as well as symptoms of other things, right. but we need to pursue them to find out if it is, let's get the help you need to live a very long and healthy life with your diabetes. We have that, we can do that. What does a type 2 diabetic look like? Is there such a thing? No, okay. <laughs> no, there isn't. Uh, we, we, everyone, we first of all, we want to make sure that we treat every individual as an individual, right? When they come into a diabetes education program at Catholic Health, we look at that person with type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes or pre-diabetes as an individual. It's patient-centered care. So we want to know what's going on in your life, what your diabetes is, is, is like. There's, I don't want to say that it's um, complicated, but type 2 diabetes is a little bit complicated. No two people are alike. There are so many issues and challenges within your body that affect type 2 diabetes that if I assumed you were just like somebody else, we wouldn't be helping everyone or helping you the best way possible. You are an individual. Your diabetes is individual to you. Your um, background, your culture, everything we take mm -hmm. into consideration to make sure we meet your needs and your goals to help you manage your diabetes. What is going on when somebody is diagnosed with diabetes here locally right. with your team? Well, first and foremost, we want to partner with all of our providers. Our relationship as a certified diabetes care and education specialist like myself and the others, the other staff that we have here at Catholic Health throughout Long Island, we partner with our cardiologists, with our primary care physicians, with our endocrinologists. All, we work as a team to do what's best for that individual living with diabetes. Whether they start in, in the primary care office or your office or endocrinology to find out they have diabetes, they want to come to us. Diabetes is very unique. Other diseases, you can receive your medication, take it and do the best you can. That medication is going to really help you. The difference with diabetes is it's a 24-7 disease. Everything an individual does physically, every emotion they feel, every food they put in their mouth is going to impact their diabetes. Therefore, if we don't put that individual in the driver's seat, if we don't teach them the skills, the tools, and the knowledge to manage their diabetes, and we're just partners on the bus to help them be successful, they're not going to be. I say to my patients, I say, let me finish before you, you know, think this is strange. I said, but diabetes is like a game. Think about this. If I don't teach you the rules to play a game, are you ever going to win? No. Same thing with diabetes. If I don't provide you the information, the skills, the tools, and the knowledge, you won't be successful. No matter how great that medicine is that you're taking or the device that we put on you, it's not going to work because you need to be in charge. And that's what we do at Catholic Health. We have 10 
certified diabetes education programs, and I mean certified through the American Diabetes Association, which means our programs have not only met the standards of care, but we like to exceed those standards of care. So you can be assured as a person living with diabetes or even pre-diabetes, if you come to one of our diabetes education programs, you're gonna receive the best care that's evidence-based and approved by the American Diabetes Association. We're so proud of that. And we, are, we had four centers a few months ago. We have 10 now. Wow. We're gonna have close to 20 next year because our goal of Catholic Health is to allow access to this care. So we're branching out across Long Island. So every person living with diabetes can receive this life-saving education. Okay, so here I am a diabetic. Yeah, I, I'm a patient living with diabetes. Yeah. I come to your office. Yeah. What does my visit look like? Sure. Your first visit is going to be about an hour. I'm going to tell you that right now because okay. we get the time to spend with you. An hour. Right? You're Think spending an that. hour with a we patient. We get to spend an hour That's with unbelievable. you. unbelievable. It is. But we get to know you. We get to know what type of diabetes you have. What medications are you taking? What is your lifestyle? What's your work style? What stress do you have in your life? Because unfortunately, so many people think it's only about the food. And, they, and what's even worse is they think, if we go to a diabetes center, or if I go to see a diabetes care and education specialist, you're gonna take all my special foods away. And many have said that to mm -hmm. us, and that is so not true. Where there's nothing, we don't believe in deprivation. We believe in helping you meal plan appropriately, mindful eating. We also are very sensitive to cultural foods. We wanna make sure that you have in your meal plan those foods that make you feel comfortable, right? I always think about my father, Giuseppe Buono. If mm -hmm. I ever said to Giuseppe, no more pasta, first I would have been disowned, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and he wouldn't have been able to stick with that. So our job is to make sure we meet the patient where they are in their journey living with their diabetes. Some are going to be wanting to know more about plant-based diets. Some aren't ready for that. Some, we're gonna be happy if we can get some physical activity into their day, right? Or maybe change from that bagel to two slices of whole wheat toast. But there's so much, so much that we wanna cover. And it's not just that one visit, that's the first visit. Then we use technology. We have continuous glucose monitors that we're able to put on every individual that wants to participate in that. And that helps us see the behind the scenes, what's going on 24 hours a day, because you can't possibly stick your finger that many times. We use that, we use that technology. And then we bring you back, because these are covered services under your insurance. We bring you back ongoing to participate in classes, we have Supermarket Smarts showing you how to shop effectively in a supermarket, dining out tips, how you can go and enjoy eating out in a restaurant because people think they can't do that anymore. We have monitoring tips, how to interpret those numbers to get the best out of your diabetes management. So we have so much that we offer our patients. Tell me about the glucose monitoring because anybody watching this program has to listen to this. This is so cool. Go ahead. Certainly. So people have seen commercials for continuous glucose monitoring like a Libre or Dexcom. Those are the two most popular companies that are, on, that are out there today. And what it does is it allows an individual to actually get either on a smartphone or a receiver what their blood sugar is at that moment in time. But this technology is actually called predictive technology. So what's different than from a, a glucose monitor to a meter is that the meter, blood glucose meter, which is still great, it's great technology, it allows the patient to see what their blood sugar is right now at this moment in time. But it doesn't tell them where they were and it doesn't tell them where they're going. That's where the predictive technology comes in. With continuous glucose monitoring, it allows the person to see what that trend before, where they are right now, where they're going. So for instance, Dr. Dave, let's say they see a blood sugar of 120. You and I know both know that's pretty good, especially if it's after a meal. You don't wanna wake up at 120, but let's say it's 120. All right, I just ate, I'm doing really well. But the arrow next to the 120 is straight down. That's very different than an arrow that's going, you're, you're staying, staying steady. That arrow straight down is going to tell me, as a person living with diabetes, I'm dropping quickly. I should have a little something before I get low. So what did we just do? We prevented low blood sugar. Mm. So that's a safety issue here that we have. And we now have the technology to prevent lows or even highs. If you see that arrow going straight up, maybe I should go for a walk right now. And now I'm gonna prevent high blood sugar. This is incredible technology. What Catholic Health has done, we've taken that a step further. We've purchased the professional versions 
of those models, which means you as an individual, you don't need to have your, your own yet at this time. Maybe you don't want one, maybe your insurance doesn't cover it. But when you come into a diabetes education program, I can put a professional version on you, which means you're gonna wear for you the 10 or 14 days. We still get to see everything about your diabetes. And we bring you back, we do it very special here. We bring you back mid-term, so five days later, we look at what's going on with your diabetes and your management together, you and I, and then we decide on what you wanna do for the next couple of days, what you're gonna work on. So when you come back, I get to show you how great you've done, and you, you leave feeling empowered and encouraged to continue on that path to health and wellness. Wow, so it's really empowering the patient to it take control. It is, completely. Okay, so anybody watching this show right now uh -huh. who is pre-diabetic, insulin resistant, diabetic, has a loved one who's diabetic, has a great, great grandmother who's diabetic, they need to reach out to you. So where can they reach out to you and get into one of your locations and start the process? Sure, so first and foremost, if you have a provider, primary care endocrinologist, which is that specialty physician that manages diabetes, we have wonderful endocrinologists here at Catholic Health, wonderful primary care cardiologists, you can talk to your provider first and say, where's the Diabetes Education Center in Catholic Health closest to me? Better yet, call yourself. Any person living with diabetes can refer themselves. Pick up the phone, 855-908-8989. Very simple. You're connected immediately to us and we will find a diabetes education program nearest to either where you work or where you live, whatever's most convenient for you. So anyone, pick up the phone and call. That's wow. simple. That's or nice. speak to your provider. Lucille, this all seems too good to be true. <laughs> okay, so the obvious question is, a lot of people watching right now are excited to come in and speak with your team. Is it covered by insurance? What's the story? Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is, and it's, it's a covered benefit, especially with Medicare. Medicare allows individuals a certain amount of hours every single year and commercially insured cover this benefit. The nice thing is we do that work for the, for the patient living with diabetes. All they need to do is make that phone call. Again, it's 855-908-8989. Once they make that appointment with us, we can verify their coverage and make sure they're covered. So nobody comes and gets an unexpected bill. But the thing that we really wanna get across is only right now, only 5% of Medicare beneficiaries ever take advantage of diabetes self-management education. And only 7% of commercially insured individuals living with diabetes ever receive diabetes self-management education. So we wanna do programs such as this. We wanna get the word out to say, we have this resource for you that's covered under your insurance. Please make that phone call. Please come see us. Let us help you. That's what we do. We're specialists in diabetes. Thank you for such a great overview, Lucille. Um, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll hear from a diabetes patient who's been able to dramatically reverse his condition thanks to his dedication and Lucille's guidance and support. My boyfriend drinks too much. I found help and support at Al-Anon Family Groups. If someone's drinking troubling you, you might be surprised at what you can learn in an Al-Anon Family Group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to al .org. Are you ready to open your heart and home for 18 months to a puppy like Esther? To find out more about becoming a canine companion for Independence Puppy Raiser, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. You can make a world of difference in the life of a person with a disability. Welcome back to Catholic Health, Stronger Together with Dr. Dave. We've discussed diabetes, explained type one and type two, and outlined the difference between being pre-diabetes and living with diabetes. Now, let's meet a gentleman who was told he has diabetes and decided to do something about it. John Begley is 61 and now lives in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He's originally from Long Island, and when he was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, a friend recommended he explore Catholic Health's diabetes educational program. John soon made the acquaintance of our previous guest, Lucille Hughes. Let's hear from John about his experience. I have known Lucille Hughes for um, a number of years through Lucille's guidance. I mean, she worked with me for a, a, a while uh, and checked on me and tried to help me along. But, you know, try to 
move over to more of a Mediterranean diet. Um, so more fish. I always ate chicken, um, you know, vegetables. Um, you know, uh, try not to eat white food, which can be hard. Um, and I'm not a saint about it. For uh, breakfast, I usually have a protein shake. Um, you know, and uh, lunch I'll have, um, I'll have like a mozzarella tomato salad with basil, or um, sometimes I'll have a tuna sandwich with um, high fiber bread, um, you know, um, salads, vegetables. Um, night I'll usually have a piece of fish or chicken. You know, every like two and a half weeks or so, I'll have red meat, um, but I, I've subtracted that quite a bit from my diet. I usually work out about three or four times a week. I think Ozempic is an amazing drug. Um, uh, uh, you know, I give myself a shot once a week. Um, and in just a few months time, I lowered my A1C to uh, seven, I think it was 7.1 to 5.8. I think I equate a lot of that to um, my weight loss. I equate a lot of that to the, the medication. I feel that, you know, the things that I'm doing and the thing that I was coached on by uh, with Lucille Hughes and um, and the knowledge that I um, have come to know and the medication that I'm taking, I think that has all been, you know, uh, those have been a few ingredients to the success of where I am right now. What a great inspiration John is. It goes to show what's possible when you take your condition seriously, make a few healthy changes, and stick with the program. Great work, John, and kudos to Lucille. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to learn about some easy to prepare meals that may help you live healthier. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Discover immunotherapy and find out how your body's natural immune system can become your greatest hope in the fight against cancer. Speak with your doctor and visit su2c.org slash immunotherapy to learn more. Welcome back to Catholic Health, Stronger Together with Dr. Dave. In our previous segment, we saw how a few substantial adjustments in diet were able to help one man move out of the danger zone via the type 2 diabetes. Now we're going to turn it over to Elisa Ferguson, diabetes coordinator at St. Joseph's Hospital in Bethpage. Elisa is going to share a few meal plans which are easy to weave into our personal diets. Let's see what she has in mind. When I teach about healthy eating, I almost always start with beverages. So I never want to ask people to give up foods that they love, but one of the things that we really encourage people with diabetes to do is eliminate sugary drinks, right? So this would be like a sugary soda with 17 teaspoons of sugar. There's really just no room for that in a meal plan for diabetes. And we tell people to avoid fruit juice as well for the same reason, but except when blood sugars are low. Blood sugars go low, having just a little bit of fruit juice is really good at bringing it back up. So I spend a lot of time teaching patients how to make the best beverage choices. So that looks like drinking a lot of water. Um, other things people can have is like flavored water, something like this, hint, very good. Um, seltzer is nice because it doesn't have any carbohydrates um, and it comes in lots of nice flavors too. And then coffee and tea usually don't have any carbohydrates unless we add them to them. So we would teach them how to look for like an unsweetened iced tea or to have coffee with as little as added to it as possible. After I teach about beverages, one of the things that comes up a lot in diabetes is portions. Right? So, um, for example, if you get a bagel from a bagel store, the portion is really larger than what most people can fit into a meal plan. A bagel like this is about five ounces. Um, that would be like eating five slices of bread. So that would be very likely to raise blood sugars. So I might teach somebody to say like have half instead of a whole or um, to gut the bagel, right? To rip some of the top and the bottom out or to look for something like a mini bagel, which would be a more appropriate size. Or Thomas is actually makes bagel thins, which are really nice and thin. And so these fit into a meal plan very nicely. Another way that we might talk about portions is a lot of time I use a, a one cup measuring cup because this is about the right portion for carbohydrate foods, things like fruits, pasta, cereal, rice, potato, this is a good um, 
serving size for those foods. And then I'll often show them what that looks like, right? So this is the portion of pasta that fits into a meal plan easily. So the way we make this work is we add low carbohydrate foods on the plate as well. So that might be cooked vegetables, a green salad, maybe some turkey meatballs or protein to mix in with that. Um, same thing with, with rice, you know? So a cup of rice looks like this. Um, and then the other foods on the plate would want to be low carbohydrate. So lots of maybe stir fried chicken and vegetables or shrimp and vegetables. So we like to use a lot of visuals, right? So this is like about the size of a piece of whole wheat bread. Um, if you went to a place like that sells paninis, usually the bread is much bigger and thicker. So we would teach them, well, that has a lot more carbohydrates. We might start with half a panini, for example. You know, we'd also teach about label reading, right? So I might teach somebody how to pick up a package and look at the food label for serving size and total carbohydrates, okay? So because this is a protein food, this has no carbohydrates, it's not gonna raise blood sugars. Thank you, Elisa. It's great to know that all the foods we need to eat can be easily found at the grocery store. It's just a question of staying within the guidelines. Elisa is going to introduce us to a patient who's making great progress in controlling diabetes through diet. I found out in 2016 that I had diabetes. The doctor recommended that I go see a dietitian and said the best one was St. Joseph's, which I found out it was. I went through the classes. I've been coming here since 2017. I come once every three months, which helps me to control my diabetes. When John first came to see me in 2017, um, his A1C was eight, which is elevated. Um, he took the classes and then we began working on one-on-one -on -one sessions. We actually worked with his doctor to change his medications and I worked with his doctor to get him that Libre, which is a continuous glucose monitor. And what's so great about that is it takes readings every five minutes. So now we know so much more about how John's doing. He knows so much more as he goes throughout the day. So now when he comes in kind of five years later, his A1C is down to 6.8, which is diabetes in good control. And every time he comes, I download his device. And what that allows us to do is really see what's happening with his blood sugars on like an hourly basis. And we can see when it's good, when he's at risk for going low, when it's going high, so that we can kind of brainstorm together how to keep his levels as safe as possible. The next step was getting used to putting the patch on my arm. As far as this, it's like a lifesaver. I, ch I check constantly. I can tell you when I'm high and when I'm low. With the graphs, I understand where my level is. It gives me a sense of security. What a wonderful story. Thank you to all of my guests. We hope you've enjoyed this segment of Stronger Together with Dr. Dave. If you would like to know more about Catholic Health's Diabetes Education Centers, call 855-908-8989, or to make a gift in support of this or another program that is important to you, please visit chsli.org or call 1-855-CHS-4500. Thank you for watching today. I am Dr. Dave Degati, and I'll see you next time on Catholic Health, Stronger Together with Dr. Dave.